So just as your softer skills, your feeling, your interaction with the bike and, and feeling the feedback from the bike is important when you're climbing and looking for grip. When we're looking for grip here, we're going to be crossing a number of routes. The other option is a swamp, which is about that deep and there permanently. Stinks. Not a very nice place to be riding. Now the fear and threat of these routes, in reality, is actually less of a problem than the physical effects of riding through that paddle. But I've got to stay loose, I've got to project through, and I've got to ride with a level of commitment and confidence as I cross these routes that I'm soft on the bike. Any gripping on hard, tensing up and holding on as we approach, the bike isn't going to move as freely below me, and in wet conditions more than any other, the bike's going to start sliding around from underneath me. The bike needs to bobble up and down over the roots with my mass pushing through the bike, not rigid on top of the bike, waiting for it to squirt from underneath me, binning me into the bank, or my eyes being drawn to the paddle, my shoulders twisting to where my head is looking, and as I ride across, ending up riding straight through the middle of that glute. So on that clip you see the back wheel have a bit of a slip out as we exit the section. The important thing is, didn't tense up, didn't tighten up. Move with the bike a little, keep my head looking where I want to go, my shoulders and hips pointing to that direction, and pretty soon I've fed the bike back into line. So don't freeze up when the bike starts to drift, keep looking where you want to go, keep projecting your head, and stay casual. Previously, in, in earlier editions, we have looked at corners in some details and cornering and getting more from your, your performance in corners, either flat corners or berms. Just to recap and revisit for winter months when the ground is wet, or even in the summer when the ground is wet for that matter, there's going to be less grip available to you. So you've got to maximise that grip. Now yes, you can go round a corner with your pedals level, but at some point, at some stage, there's going to be enough or too little traction to do that. And with your weight inside the line of the corner, the bike's going to drift from under you. Not just drift from under you, fly from under you. Be pushed from under you. Two things are going to help make sure that this doesn't happen. Firstly, is your footwork. Dropping that outside pedal is imperative. If you do it every corner, you won't be left wanting one corner where you did need it, scratching your head on the ground thinking, why wasn't my foot down that time? Take the decision out as you approach. You are going to get your outside foot down. But we are not going to lean the bike over with our hips and our outside foot down so that our mass is inside the line, centrifugal force building and pushing the bike there. We're going to keep our hips and body over the centre line of the bike and push the bike over with the inside hand. That way, the bike is leaning, offering more tread, more traction, more grip. My hips twisting drive the bike through the corner, but my mass crucially stays between the line. Added to which, if the bike drifts, I'm in a position to drift with it. If I'm here and the bike drifts, it's gone from under me in split, split seconds. So get that outside foot down and stand on it. 